Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Got a viewer letter today about how to pick out the right size tractor. And what I'm going to go through with you today is the same type of thing I would have gone through with you if you'd have been buying a tractor from me when I worked in the dealership world. And in this particular instance today, I think the best device to help pick the right tractor is this, a tape measure. And we'll get to that in just a minute. My letter today comes from Eleanor. And Eleanor says, you probably have way too many people asking you questions, but I'm going to try. And don't, don't feel that way, guys. I love to get viewer mail. She says, I find myself running a 100-acre horse farm with about 30 acres of pasture that needs to be tended and 40 acres or so of hay field. I also use a three-point sprayer for fence line maintenance, and I need to spray my fields for weed control. I use round and square bales up to about 700 pounds. I'm going to need a snow plow and I was hoping to use a 10-foot brush hog. And she says up until now she's been borrowing a tractor and she's not going to have access to that anymore. She needs something four-wheel drive, reliable. Can I point her in the right direction? And then almost as an afterthought she says, and this is real important, I have a very functional case 580C for a heavy stuff. And a 580C is a backhoe. Usually, there are two things that I look at when I'm trying to guide a person to the right size tractor. And that is lift capacity and PTO horsepower. Lift capacity is important because you're going to be using the front end loader and the back, which Eleanor is going to be using, to pick up stuff. And you want to make sure you've got enough. And usually, a lot of times, that is dictated by the size of the tractor and the, and the uh, hydraulic pump capacity, but the size of the tractor is important. And then uh, PTO horsepower, because you're going to be pulling implements that are driven by the power takeoff, and you want enough power there to do what you want to do. So let's talk about Eleanor's situation. First off, there's two things she's going to be doing that require lift capacity, and that's lifting round bales and lifting a three-point sprayer. Now let's look at round bales. If you're feeding these small round bales, they're usually four, four foot wide by five foot tall, and they'll weigh 700 to 1,000 pounds. If you're feeding the big five foot bales, five by six bales, they could weigh up to a ton. But if that's all you're feeding is four by five bales and all you'll ever feed, then a 40 horsepower tractor with a lift capacity around 1,500 pounds on the front end uh, will, will lift those all day long and you can feed them. Now, if you're wanting to stack hay or do something like that, you need something a little bit bigger. But if all you're doing is pulling them uh, maybe out of the barn and taking them to a feeder, 40 horsepower tractor is fine. Now, let's talk about the three-point sprayer. We need to look at the size of that because it's, it can't go on the backhoe. It's got to go on the tractor and determine, does the tractor have enough lift capacity for that? So look at the weight of the sprayer and then look at the weight of the material that goes in it and will you fill it full and so on. You know, if you've just got a 200-gallon sprayer uh, and you've got flat ground, probably a 40-horsepower tractor, probably 50-horse would be better, can pull that. I've got a 100-gallon sprayer on my 40-horse tractor. It handles it just fine. Uh, I'd probably not stare away from a 200-gallon sprayer. So we're, we're down there with lift capacity. Now, with Eleanor having a Case 580C, if she wants to pick up a bunch of creek gravel or dirt or anything like that, she's got that covered. So lift capacity really is not a big determining factor in what she's going to be looking for in terms of a tractor, in my opinion. The big thing she's talking about, are, I want to talk about today to get the right tractor, are two things. Number one, this 10-foot cutter that goes on the back of the tractor. And number two, she mentioned hay fields, and I want to talk about that. So how does, how does this device right here come in to picking out a tractor? Well, rotary cutters are rated on how much horsepower they require, generally by how big the material is they'll cut, the maximum size material they'll cut. You have rotary cutters that'll cut up to an inch material that are pretty light. You have rotary cutters that cut up to two inch material. There's three inch, four inch. I've seen a rotary cutter that'll cut six inch material. It's a monster and it takes a gob of horsepower. But for most of us, we're not gonna be trying to cut down bigger trees in the woods. So Eleanor, the first thing you need to do, you mentioned you have 30 acres of pasture and 40 acres of, um, 
hayfield, that leaves 30 acres of something else. Are you ever going to go back in that timber, which I assume that other place is, the other 30 acres, and try to cut you know, some of the sprouts and, and smaller trees out there? If you are, that's where this device comes in handy. Go find the biggest thing you'll cut, measure the base of it, and then figure out what cutter you're going to want, what 10-foot cutter you're going to want, and how much horsepower that requires. I'm going to show you a couple of cutters. Here's a cutter that's, that's a 10 foot that'll cut up to two inch diameter that only takes 40 PTO horsepower. Now, here's another cutter that'll cut bigger material. And if you got one that was three point mounted instead of pull type, it's a 10 foot cutter that takes 75 horsepower. So you have two cutters here that might take 40 horsepower or might take 75 horsepower. So the first thing, Eleanor, you need to do is figure out, am I going to cut bigger material? How much cutter is needed for that? Figure out what cutter you're going to be buying to do that and then match that to the tractor and make sure you've got enough horsepower in the tractor to pull that cutter. Okay, I want to pause right here today and talk about two things. The difference between engine and PTO horsepower and when you need more horsepower than what the cutter is rated for, lots more. So first off, engine and PTO. Most of the time when a salesperson is trying to sell you a tractor, they're talking about the engine horsepower of that tractor. But the important number is PTO horsepower. And the engine is always more than the PTO horsepower because there's parasitic loss. Everything that is driven on that tractor, like the power steering pump and the uh, uh, hydraulic pump and air conditioning, things like that, take horsepower away from what is available at the power takeoff. So you always want to look at the PTO horsepower to determine if you can pull a cutter. Now, next thing I want to tell you, and I'm going to post a link to a video at the end that will explain this, is that cutter may be rated at 40 PTO horsepower, but it may take way more than that to pull on your place. Because if you're trying to cut Let's say you're trying to cut two inch material and it's packed in every three inches there's a two inch material tree versus one every few feet. It'll take more horsepower. If you're pulling it up hills, it'll take more horsepower. So, and, and how fast you go determines how much horsepower you require. So if you're looking at a cutter that is rated at 40 PTO horsepower and you've got hills and you want to run wide open, and you've got thick material to cut, you better add 10 to 20 horsepower onto that and get a little bigger tractor than it looks like you need on paper. Now the last thing I want to talk about today in Eleanor's situation is something that worries me just a little bit because I've had this happen before. When I was in the dealership world, I had a buddy of mine call me on a Saturday and said I need to buy a 40 horse tractor. And I gave him a price and we negotiated back and forth. He finally bought his 40 horse tractor. About a year later, he called me, he says, I need a round baler. And I said, what are you going to pull the round baler with? And he said, that tractor you sold me. And I said, that's not a big enough tractor to pull a round baler. I'm sorry. He said, oh, yeah, it is. I said, well, I, I tell you, it's not. Well, he went and bought a used round baler. And about maybe three months later, I got to sell him a new tractor. And I always felt bad about that. So I should have asked him when he was shopping for a 40 horse tractor, what are you going to do with it? Because had I known he was going to cut hay with it, I wouldn't have sold it to him. I would have got him into a bigger tractor. So Eleanor, I'm going to tell you, you've got hay field there. And if you're ever thinking about cutting and baling hay, you need to get a bigger tractor. And that will be the horsepower uh, determining factor for how big a tractor you get. Because hay equipment takes a lot of horsepower, depending on how big you want. Disc mower conditioners and round balers, the bigger ones take 80, 90, 100 PTO horsepower. And so if you ever have an idea, you're going to cut and bale your own hay. Now, if you cut it with a sickle mower and bale it with a square baler, uh, it doesn't take near as much horsepower. But you got to think on down the road because anytime you change course with your tractor and have to get a different size, it costs money and we want to avoid that. So Eleanor, I'm telling you, go out and find the biggest thing you want to cut with your rotary cutter. Find a rotary cutter that'll do that and then find a tractor that will pull that rotary cutter and you're good. I appreciate you guys watching my videos and I do appreciate viewer mail. It gives me some great ideas for videos. One other thing I appreciate is subscribers. 
If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do, and you can do so by clicking the mic face icon and checking the bell so you're notified when I post future videos. Here's a link to my website and the Tractor Fun Store with unique items for sale for the tractor owner that helps support my channel. And here's a link to that video I was telling you about that shows how manufacturers rate their cutters for horsepower. Thanks for watching.